Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today for Fairground Friday, I thought I'd do another food stand for the fairground. Well, I say food. Okay, before we get started with the main build proper, uh, the health and safety police have been on my back suggesting that this video should contain a health warning. So up front, I'm going to say this video may contain traces of rat. Uh, you have been warned. <laughs> Anyway, um, I had hoped to do a more significant build in the fairground, maybe start even incorporating all of the rides that we've done together. Uh, but we've been going through what, well, the media's been calling uh, a heat wave in the UK the last week. I mean, it's been about 30 degrees centigrade, which uh, if you put in Fahrenheit view is, uh, what, 6 times 9, 54, 8, 86 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which I'm sure for any of you living in any really hot countries, that is absolutely nothing. And it's like that temperature about three quarters of the year. But anyway, uh, for us, we aren't used to it. and We don't have air conditioning in our buildings. Uh, and indeed, the Lego room gets sun from pretty much uh, sunrise to sunset. And it is an oven in there. So uh, the idea of working in there and doing a film with all the hot lights and everything else for filming really didn't appeal. So we're going to do a smaller side build instead. Uh, but they all need doing, so it will be just as much fun. Now, this build is actually inspired by, well, both an old set, but also a single piece. Uh, and that is this piece here. Uh, and it was suggested to me that I use it for this purpose, though I had already had the idea, but I'm going to give you a bedoying anyway, because it is a good spot. Uh, because this is the first part of a sticker that would say Gyrosphere uh, from the set 75929, Carnotaurus Gyrosphere Escape from 2018, obviously a Jurassic World set. But Gyros, as I would call it, uh, is actually also a food product, kind of like a wrap, uh, usually with pork, with a tzatziki salad or something, kind of in a pita bread. And you can walk around and munch on that while you're at something like a fairground. So I thought that was a brilliant idea. And so did somebody else in the comment section. Uh, another bedoying though to people who've pointed out that you do not call it gyros, even though that's what it looks like. And it's the beginning of gyroscope and other words like that, because the Greeks don't say the G. So you say yeros. So, uh, yeah, so we'll be trying to call it Yaros from now on. So I'll give you a bedoying for pronunciation. Thank you, both of you. So, yeah, today we're going to be doing a Yaros stand. Uh, and uh, this is also inspired by other pieces that I got in recent hauls. I mean, this was in the last haul. But also I got a lot of special pieces for this build uh, in the recent Bricks and Pieces haul. Uh, and these as well. And I also got these wonderful little tiles, which are technically, whoop, just dropped it. That's how tiny it is. Technically, these are sort of tacos with uh, a filling in, but I reckon they also look like mini pitters uh, with filling in. So I'm going to use them as Yaros. Uh, so I'm going to do two sizes of uh, Yaros. I'm going to do a small one, which is basically very basic, sort of a uh, green uh, brown and then that bit on the top uh, and I'm going to do a bigger version as well and the bigger version is going to have the meat in it it's going to have some sort of tomatoes or salad in it uh, and then it's going to have some green as well for maybe some lettuce or something like that or the cucumber from the tzatziki and that can go on like that and then we can just fill in that with a tile. So I think we've got two sizes, and this one isn't patterned, of course, uh, and I've only come across two of these, so I haven't really got enough to do just those. Uh, so I'm going to have two sizes of Yeros, uh, and that's going to be the small, perhaps for children, <laughs> and this is going to be the big one for hungry dads. So there we go. So they look really good, and what I've deliberately done is made quite a few of those. And I've kind of got both handednesses of these just to make them all a little bit different because they'll all be sort of stuffed pit pitter pockets. Uh, so people can be walking around my fairground eating them and it won't just be the stall that we're doing today selling them that's got them. There'll be other people sort of walking around munching on them. Uh, and there is the other small one as well. So too small and I'll look out for more of those tiles in the future and fall big. 
Uh, and while I was doing the sort of little builds to kind of get this thing started, I thought we could do with a couple of bottles of sauce, because although it's probably blasphemy in Greece to add extra sauce to your beautiful Yeros, I think in uh, the UK and in other countries, we tip loads of extra sauce on top. So I've done a garlic mayonnaise here, which you can uh, just put all over the top. And for those of the bold, some red hot chili sauce in kind of a squirty bottle. Yeah, very careful with that one. So now we've done all the sort of smaller stuff, we really need to get on to building the actual uh, wagon itself. Uh, and like the rest of my uh, fairground, I'm going to have that on wheels because it would have been towed to Brick Nottingham and would be towed away to the next city when they're done here. So let's do that. So the inspiration for the main body of the build is actually taken from a very old town set from 1993. And that's 6345 Aerial Acrobats. Uh, and that was a really nice set, I think. Uh, and the main bit that I'm focusing on is just the trailer part that would be pulled uh, that was basically selling food out of the back. Uh, and the reason why I picked that was because it was very bright with its colours of red, white and blue, which I really liked. Uh, but also because it is a four wide build. And I really want to keep a lot of these builds very small so they can all fit in my fairground. I mean, that monster truck uh, is a bit of an exception, I suppose, and that's absolutely massive. And it seems that that's a, a common trend at the moment with that pigsy food truck being about 10 studs wide and about 20 long or something like that. So mine's going to be about a quarter of the size, uh, but that won't impact the scene at all. It will be just as fun and just as funny. So the base I've got for this is this, Ooh, and it's very manoeuvrable indeed as it currently stands, quite fun to drive around. Uh, and I've just done that out of a couple of plates. Uh, different colours and some wheel pieces, of course. Uh, so I can just start building that up from the ground up. Uh, and, whoop, wrong already. There we go, right there, and then the tow bar. And I have changed it from that build uh, quite considerably that you wouldn't really notice necessarily. It's got definitely the same sort of theme running through it with these old style mud guards, for example. Um, but yeah, you have to change things quite a bit if you want to get it exactly right for what you want to do. I do, as you know, plan all these things kind of meticulously on <laughs> Lego Digital Designer uh, before building them, usually, anyway. So we've got a little stripe of red at the bottom, uh, and then we've got our blue section, which is like that. So, so far, so ordinary. Then we can have a bit of a red stripe again. Uh -uh -uh. And I do like to take inspiration from all sorts of different eras. Uh, and as you know, I do base a lot of my builds uh, on existing sets. And that's largely just so, well, they're kind of recognisable and there's a good bit of nostalgia in there as well. Uh, I'm a firm believer of Lego looking like Lego and not trying to represent something completely accurate and have all accurate features and all the rest of it. Uh, but the thing... Uh, in addition to that, that I really liked about this uh, older set were some of the parts it used. Uh, and one of them was these sort of, well, I don't know what you call them, kind of panels on a hinge brick. And these are the bits that kind of would be closed when the uh, vendor was closed and sort of it'd all be boarded up the window. And then when they open, it kind of goes down and forms kind of a serving platform, uh, if you will. So I think that was one of the main reasons uh, I went for this. Uh, and we'll see shortly, there's another two in red that would probably fold down when it was closed that fold fold up to sort of become, well, in that set part of the sign, though I'm just having them blank in mine. Uh, and other really interesting parts uh, include things like this that I got in a recent haul. Now, this is incredibly stained, this one. Uh, so I gave it a good clean, but it's still not come up. And I know I could peroxide it, but I haven't really got the time or the inclination. So I have to decide if we want this to be a little... Uh, <laughs> off white or not. I mean, I have got a normal one in white if we did want to use that, but I figure these things would be quite uh, quite grubby, really. So I don't really mind the fact that it is slightly off, and that's going to be the only bit sticking out. And I also figure that if this is selling sort of fast food and that is the vent, then maybe it'll get all bunged up with all sorts of grease and dirt anyway. So maybe it actually adds to the build. So I'm going to have two people working in here, one at the front, one at the back. Uh, so I need kind of a workstation for each. So that's going to be the back workstation. And indeed, I'm going to put kind of a table in the middle there that separates the two sections as well. 
uh, that I'm just going to have a bit of a setup on the back, just made out of different plates with the brake lights sort of included in it, like in the original set. Uh, and then the back kind of setup is going to be like a stove, which I've just done with these four sort of uh, uh, metallic grey uh, round one by ones and some orange, uh, trans orange uh, plates underneath that. So it kind of represents a hob and I can put sort of a pot of whatever they're cooking in there. So that'll be on the middle of there. Uh, and then we can continue the sides. So I've got these lovely one by one by three pillars. Next. Uh, and then we have to come to the door because we want to be able to get in and out of this. When I was designing it, I was thinking maybe it didn't need a door and I just kind of made the entire back side solid. But then I thought, well, it doesn't really work. Uh, and the original, because we've only got three uh, studs worth of width here to kind of fit a door in the back. Uh, so you couldn't use like a big uh, train door or something like that. Uh, and the original has kind of like a, a stable door, I think of it, not a stable door, what they're called, where you've got one bit at the bottom and then another bit that's at the top, as you can sort of open half of the door. Maybe that's a stable door? I don't know. Uh, and there was a sort of a two tall bit at the bottom and then a three tall bit uh, on the top. Anyway, those are quite old pieces. I don't have any of those. Uh, but I do have this one, which is more modern, and it's four tall. So I figured that basically I would just do that and have that as the door uh, and it is a bit off the ground so what I thought I could do instead of having this tile here to sort of just smooth off the bit that the door wouldn't cover I kind of thought that maybe I'll just replace that with a very short ladder and I actually have one of these in red so I thought oh that's ideal and maybe that looks better anyway a bit of variety so I thought that was quite good because a lot of these things kind of have fold out stairs when they get into um, you know parking mode anyway so that's that there is a big window panel to make up the rest of that side. Another one of those. I've knocked the pot off there for the first... Oh, we'll do that later. <laughs> for the first of many times, probably. Uh, and then some end uh, of the square windscreens. And the original had these in translite blue, but I really prefer them in the clear because I think it makes all the scenes a lot easier to see. So there is, once we've got the pot back in place, our sort of ground level build and I think before I start putting all the roof on this I think I want to focus more on doing the inside uh, and the uh, reason for the rat warning will now become apparent. <laughs> now although the sign officially says Yaros, uh, the other carnies all in the fairground group that travel around together uh, refer to this colloquially as the Ratto Van. And you might think, oh, why are they calling it that? That's a funny nickname. Uh, well, it's basically uh, a play on words on the dish uh, coq au vin, which is a French dish of chicken braised in wine. And vin, when pronounced uh, in English at least, sounds a bit like van. Uh, so basically that's where the van bit comes from. And the rat bit comes from the fact that, well, unfortunately, they're using rat meat instead of delicious pork. Yeah, and that's where the rat warning came in. It's not very nice at all. <laughs> but that's the joke, so we're going to go with it. Uh, obviously, they didn't want to pay the extra money for some prize-winning uh, pork from Far Corner Farm. So this is why I've been buying all of these rats, because that's what these horrible people who work in here are actually going to be chopping up and serving to people. Yeah, <laughs> you'll definitely need loads of that extra hot chili sauce to take away that rat taste. Yuck. <laughs> anyway, so I've probably turned your stomachs now. Hope you're not eating your breakfast. Uh, so what I thought I would do is use these rats in a number of places. Uh, one, I thought I'd have one in the front here being worked on, let's say, <laughs> chopped into uh, little pieces for the pot. Uh, they are dead. Don't worry. <laughs> Um, but basically, uh, I thought this was really funny because obviously you can see it through the window. So it's oh so not subtle. Uh, and basically, I'd have one employee with a knife, which you can get from friend sets, looking a bit concerned because she's got the horrible job of doing that. And maybe she's really concerned to get about getting found out uh, and uh, <laughs> the public sort of getting their own back, so to speak. So we've got her visible there. Uh, and then I thought out the back, out of this back door with the sort of ladder on, we would kind of have a big pot of all the other rats that are waiting uh, for the same treatment. So I'm going to use a bit of a variation of colours of rats because we're an equal opportunities uh, rat uh, <laughs> vendor. So I'll stick a white one in there and 
that's another grey one. There we go. Probably haven't got room for that one. No bad thing. So there is our sort of pot of rats waiting for the chop. So now you can see why the carnies would call this the Ratto van. And with that being the scene from the back, maybe with the door open in due course, and this being the scene from the front, uh, that's why the public are unaware. Uh, and unfortunately, yep, that is rat meat. <laughs> So hopefully you get that humour and you're not too disgusted by that. Uh, but that's where we're going, uh, sadly to say. <laughs> uh, and it reminds me as well of another sort of bit of pop culture that you'll know probably very well if you're British, at least, uh, from Blackadder, specifically Blackadder Goes Forth, where Baldrick, his sort of uh, faithful sidekick, uh, says that Ratto Van is a dish where there's a, a rat that's freshly run over by a van. <laughs> so it's sort of similar to that as well. Right, so if I'm going to continue this build, I'm just going to put it on uh, a plate uh, just to stop it rolling around, really, because it's already started moving. This is just temporary. It's going to be at a slightly jaunty angle for now, uh, but that's just so it doesn't roll around while we're doing things. And I can kind of stage the scene that we're going to be having uh, in the final fairground uh, when it's in position. So we can put those out the back door. And then all we need is the real ringmaster. No, not him. Uh, another ringmaster for this horrible enterprise. And that's this guy who's got a bit of a snake salesman smile on. And he's mic'd up, so he's probably talking on a bit of a loudspeaker, like roll up, roll up, get your delicious pork uh, yaros here. <laughs> or something like that. So I thought I'd have him leaning out of the front. And before I do that, I thought I'd just put one of these kind of on the table ready to go uh, and then maybe he's also handing out one of the oh can i get that on there oh it's tricky there we are one of the small ones maybe he's actually sort of leaning out let's see if i can get this in a better position so he can lean out there we go so if he's standing there always hard to do this on camera I'm going to try and sort this out in a little bit, but there we go, kind of leaning out. Uh, and maybe he's giving it to a very keen child. So he's obviously a very nasty piece of work to be doing that. But there we go. I think that's quite a funny scene uh, when you combine it with that one on the back. <laughs> right, so there we go. Disgusting bit over. Let's move on to the roof. So you can probably see why now I was very keen to get on with this build, not just because of the sort of gory, <laughs> sort of mildly sadistic sort of theme, but also because it uses a lot of the pieces I've got in recent hauls, like the rats, uh, these uh, uh, slopes here, the uh, curved pieces from the bricks and pieces order, the taco uh, shells, and even the torsos, which came in the order from Clement in France. Uh, so yeah, that's why I was keen to get going on this one. Uh, so onto the roof, uh, and that involves the other type of wonderful uh, panel from the older sets. Uh, and they're on a slightly different bracket, and they're the ones that are going to be up in that position. And it would be sort of like that when it's closed up. But I think that's the more attractive side, since I'm not going to be putting a sticker on it. Uh, and they will fit onto my roof like that. Now, I've done a solid roof because uh, the original had kind of a roof where a whole section would kind of hinge up and it would take these windows with it so you could kind of peer in the back. But I'm going to have it so, well, it's front facing. And you're not really going to need to get in it a great deal. Uh, so I kind of figured I'd do a hard uh, roof and that'll enable me to put on an oversized 3D sign, of course. And that's a much better idea. So that's going to go on pretty much like that. Uh, now, as it stands, it's quite fragile in the sense that these uh, are only held on by clutch power to the bricks above. Uh, originally, I did have in the design this plate instead of these uh, two one by two plates uh, to hold the whole thing much more strongly. Um, but in the design, I hadn't quite appreciated that I'd need every plate height I could to make that scene as vivid as possible. And I think that does make it look a lot more open. And just one more plate really does uh, kind of cramp it a little bit too much. So I'm going to push this on live on camera and hope it kind of works. Maybe the door's not in the right position. Something's holding it up. I think that's got it. Oh, I've just catapulted something. And that's his taco. I'm going to have to move that and put it back on in a minute. At least I found it. Uh, so we can get rid of that plate. So there we go. There is the basic roof. And I think that is still showing that scene wonderfully well. So that's really good. Uh, and I will be removing those supporting bricks in due course. 
So yeah, looking really good. So now for some stuff on the rooftop. Uh, and the original set had one of these kind of little antenna. So yeah, why not? I'll put that on. I've got that. Uh, the original had some wonderful flags as well. So yeah, why not? I'll put them on as well. And I've got the two sort of different versions of the same coloured flag, the kind of mirror images of each other. So there we go. And I have to move all these so they're going in the right direction for the wind of Brick Nottingham when it's in its final position. Uh, and then I'm just going to do this as a setup for the roof to hold the 3D sign. Uh, and the 3D sign is very much based on the one, well, it's pretty much a copy of the one on Stephanie's Sports Arena, 41338. Uh, and that's one of the two sets where this uh, sort of quarter taco tile comes from, actually. That's from 2018. Uh, and that 3D sign is kind of a 3D wrap, or in this case, a um, Yaros. So there we go. That is that. So all I need to do to that is add... Ooh, one of those, just so we can take our Yaros sign, get rid of that now, and put this on because it's going to be going at that angle, and therefore that is the sign on the roof. So I'll bend these down briefly, just pin that on there. It's a little bit wibbly, but only a little bit, and that's not too bad. And when they're up, it kind of holds it in position. And I think that that looks rather fantastic. We've got it saying Yaros. And we've got the wonderful, well, example of our rat Yaros <laughs> up there. <laughs> and our very enthusiastic salesman of it who'll even sell it to kids. Disgusting. Uh, so there we go. So I think all we need to do now is really think about what stickers we might want to add and then to set the scene with some more paying uh, customers. Wonderful. Well, you know I am a big fan of Lego stickers, so uh, this one is looking remarkably bare. Obviously, we do have the one on the sign, and we've technically got a printed brick there, uh, but I think we could do more than that to make this even more exciting. Uh, first of all, I figured that a caravan that was pulled along like this uh, would need a number plate. I've just found this sticker sheet that's got quite a few on, so I'll probably just pinch one of those to go on the back of it. And, well, I guess it'll have to go on that slope there, but... It won't be very visible, but, you know, I'm not going to do one uh, across assembly or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, that'll improve it just a very little bit. Uh, then I've got this sticker sheet from, uh, well, Bob's Kebob's uh, set, which is the uh, 70812 Creative Ambush, which is a, a Lego movie set from 2014. And I guess I got this in case I ever wanted to do a second Bob's Kebob's, but if I did, it'd be it'd have to be a bit different. Uh, so in which case, what I could do is pilfer these, or rather do some sticker surgery, and just take take uh, the little bit off the bottom of these two that say tasty meat, because <laughs> that's kind of adding to the joke, if you ask me. So maybe we could put tasty meat uh, either vertically, sort of running down these columns here, or maybe even... That might be better, kind of on these rounded curved bricks uh, on the top. So they're kind of attracting people from the front and back. So I think that will add to our wonderful joke that we've going on with the rat meat and the crate o rats <laughs> that we've got already on the back. So I think I'm going to do that. Uh, and then I went to the sticker pack, uh, 853921 Brick Stickers, which I think is now not uh, available for sale anymore, at least in the UK. And I always look at these for um, different ideas. And one I thought was really funny was this sort of missing cat thing, uh, which is a poster and, you know, you tear off a little bit with a phone number or something like that. Now, although this is largely rat-based, uh, I'm sure whatever they catch in the traps that they're willing to use, if they're this kind of a person. So I thought it might be really comedy to have a missing cat uh, poster kind of on the door <laughs> of the same uh, um, ratto van uh, van. So <laughs> I thought that might be a bit more humour as well. So I think I'm going to do that. Uh, and then on here... We've got two more stickers, which are actually uh, from, well, they're designed to be used with uh, the city pizza type setup, but they say taste of the city. <laughs> I just thought that was hilarious. When, the, when you think about a rat being the taste of the city, <laughs> but not in the way you think. Um, but I thought that would be really funny. Now, I could put these technically on the uh, front and back curves as well. They'd look good there in a way. But these stickers, wow, you've got to be really careful with them. Not only are they not very good uh, with their colour 
um, sort of depth in that if you put them on a black, uh, even one of these colored ones on a black tile, for example, you really won't see much of the detail. Uh, but also they're made out of kind of a different backing that is incredibly rigid. And if you try and put it on any curved surface whatsoever, it will come up all on its own. Uh, I put some honey stickers on some little jars to make honey jars and they all came up. They just will not stay in position. I even use sellotape to put them down and they still wouldn't stay. So effectively, uh, I'm going to have to find somewhere flat to put these. Um, I can't put them on the glass. I mean, I could put them on these sort of flat surfaces here. So when you're ordering, you're actually, uh, it says taste of the city written on there. So that might be a good place for those. At least it will stay there, uh, assuming it's big enough. So I'm going to get ahead and get sticking with all of these stickers. Uh, and then we'll see how it looks when it's fully done. Okay, and here it is with those stickers on. So you've got the tasty meat on each end. Not true. <laughs> False advertising right there. Uh, we've got the taste of the city, which is actually probably true. <laughs> it is the taste of the city uh, on both of those. And I think they really pop on that. So that's a really good choice of position. I almost put them on these vertical slopes, but it's always hard to read writing when it's on its side. And I think that actually works really well, especially with it repeating like that. So that's really good. Uh, and then we've got the missing cat sign on the door there. And I've deliberately put that at a slight angle because it would be posted by hand, of course. Uh, and I was thinking at one point of putting a cat in the uh, <laughs> Crato rats, but... You know, you can just imagine the complaints from all the cat lovers. So I didn't do that. I just keep it pure rat if there is such a thing as pure rat. So yeah, that all looks very good. Oh, and not to forget the number plate, which I've just put on that surface down there that probably no one will ever see again. Uh, but there we go. I like the detail, so I'll put it there. So we've got a wonderful scene on the inside with a not quite convinced uh, employee there and a very convinced uh, <laughs> peddler of rat meat on the front there. We've got a kid uh, waiting to get his. Maybe he's been accompanied by his mum, who is unwittingly uh, <laughs> feeding her son something dodgy. There we go. And then we can have a bit more of a queue because it's really popular, this. Uh, really popular indeed. Uh, so we'll have a few people there. Uh, and then some satisfied customers. We've got this guy with one of the large ones. Lucky him. Uh, and then we can have a girl here with a small one and maybe another lady with a large one. So they're all going away very happy uh, because they are ignorant of the truth. Now, I'll have another one somewhere else in my fairground, so that won't go to waste. Uh, and these two bottles, we haven't really got studs to put them on. So I could do a little side table. Sometimes they have those for sources. I could balance them on one of these things like that. And that does look very good, but wow, they are just going to fall off when I move things around. So for now, I'm just going to keep them at the front here with my uh, spare uh, Euros, which I will continue to say in real life as well when I'm ordering it. So uh, yeah, what do you think of that? Very fun and very bright and colourful scene, actually. I think we've all seen vans that look like this. I think we've all eaten food that looks like this. Let's just hope that it wasn't containing this. So I do hope you enjoyed that and uh, the concept behind it all didn't turn your stomach too much and that it didn't ruin any meal that you happen to have been eating when uh, you watched this video. Uh, but as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. Uh, and if you want to send me something for Brick Hall 100, then you are very welcome to. My address is Robin Hood Bricks, P.O. Box 11048, Nottingham, NG8, 9QS, Market UK, if you're not in the UK, with uh, a gift on the customs uh, form selected and a value of around £30 or under, including postage. And then it will sail through and not get caught by the nasty customs men. Uh, but next time on Robin Hood Bricks, I think we'll go for a freestyle build around the city. The room is red hot still, so I might even make a start on the massive glass cabinet and do something fun in there. Ooh, <laughs> dangerous, because I might not ever finish the fairground if I do that too much. Uh, so we'll do that on Monday, haul on Wednesday as usual, uh, and then back to the fairground on Friday. So, cool. Looking forward to all of that. See you! <laughs>